But without further ado, I would love to invite Brian Julius onto the call uh, to take the lead. Take it away. All right, thanks. Well, again, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. You know, folks often ask kind of what my what my favorite parts of Power BI are, and the two the two answers I, I typically give are the Power BI R and Python integration because that just gives you the ability to do anything analytically. And the second thing that really gets me fired up is external tools because external tools give you the ability to tailor Power BI exactly how you want it to work. And um, you'll you'll see that I, I've kind of gone pretty pretty far off the deep end on on external tools, and it's it's one of my my favorite things to experiment with. I've I've kind of tried to stretch it. You know, pretty pretty far beyond what you typically see, and so I want to share a lot of that with you with you tonight. Um, it was interesting just over the last couple of days. You know, as I as I as I was sitting through the the build sessions, and you know, kind of, I think like a lot of folks thinking, do I know anything about Power BI anymore? Um, and you know, is what I know still relevant? You know, I was I was kind of hoping that it wasn't going to be the case that. This was this was going to be the the focus of the presentation tonight. That um, you know that external tools weren't kind of out with the you know the the horse and buggy, and that we've moved on to something else. But I hope, and I, I think that they are still very much going to be a part of Power BI. And I hope that what you some of the things you see tonight just kind of spark your your interest and um, you know your thoughts on kind of the way you can expand. Um, what you're doing with external tools as well. Um, so this was a this was a poll I ran on LinkedIn um, a few days ago, and I really wanted to get a sense before coming here about you know how extensive it is people's use of the external tool capability, and what I found was was not entirely surprising that um, I know there's a lot of folks who don't use external tools because they're not they're not allowed to um, that work doesn't permit use of the um, external tools and the administrative privileges you need for that um, and then a sizable chunk of folks run um, you know probably DAX studio tabular editor um, ALM toolkit maybe Bravo um, you know that's probably the one to three and then, you know, four or more is just about one in five is is running, you know, kind of more extensively on the um, the external toolbar. So I'm I'm kind of hoping that, you know, tonight you see some stuff you haven't seen before. And what I wanted to do is not spend really much time at all on the, you know, kind of the big dogs, the, uh, you know, the DAX studios, the tabulators, which are amazing programs. Um, but you've probably seen a lot of that. Um, so this is this is what my external toolbar looks like. Um, and it's it's I think it's thirty one entries at the moment. Um, I run kind of what I, what i what I'll show you later, kind of the my my weekly competition. Um, but the question is, you know why why so many so many entries on my toolbar? And the reason is because I have really come to think of external tools as not just limited to, traditionally what external tools are considered to be you know to analyze in excel bravo dax studio the things that install as formal external tools in power bi but really what i what i look at is an external tool can be anything that you need to access within power bi and kind of having that capability or that um that tool or resource or um, you know website having that right accessible with you know one or two clicks within Power BI, if that is useful to your development process, then that can become an external tool. And so, really, in on my toolbar, I've kind of got about five categories of of different types of tools, and I'll show you kind of how to how to build each of those into into the toolbar. Um, so what I what I do is I, I kind of run what I consider my my Power BI external tools hunger games every week. And you know, I kind of go through the um 
through the community. Reed Havens does a great job highlighting external tools. He's always bringing developers on to show their current tools to walk do walkthroughs. And so, you know, anytime he's got somebody new on, um, you know, I, I, I plug into that one, um, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, kind of anybody who's got, you know, something new, I'm always looking to, you know, see is that something that is going to have a capability that's better than what I've currently got on my toolbar. And, you know, actually tonight we're going to, we're going to, we're going to vote one off the island and replace it with something better. And I'll show you exactly how, how we do that. So there's really, um, there's really a few general rules for turning anything into an external tool. Um, there's a there's a very specific JSON format and a very specific naming convention. Um, the other part of that is the file has to be in a particular external tools folder, and that folder will depend on how you install your external tools. If you install them through the Microsoft Store, they're going to be in one folder. If you install them manually, they're going to be in a different folder. But that folder is always going to be called external tools. And I'll show you as we get a little further in kind of what that path looks like. But the the critical thing here is that um, it requires administrative rights to get to that folder and to make changes to that. And so if you don't have that that capability, you're still you're still not lost. It's not time for you to check out of the presentation yet because there are still a number of of tools that work as portables, so don't require administrative rights. Um, and there are a number that work as standalones um, that, you know, particularly Report Analyzer, um, Michael Kowalski's tool that we'll be talking about, is a great example of one that can run standalone outside of Power BI. It also runs beautifully as an external tool from the toolbar. Um, your icon data has to be encoded in Base64, and we'll talk about how to do that. And there's this very particular structure um, that it has to adhere to. But within that, within that set of requirements, anything, anything you use can be an external tool. And so, you know, here's just you know a couple of examples of main categories. Um, you know, website, file, executable. I, I've just highlighted here the, the main things that change depending on what you're putting on the toolbar. And so for website, in this path command, what you can do is you can just put explorer.exe and that will just fire up the default browser. Um, and then you just put the, the website in. Um, with regard to files, um, you just put the, the executable for the program that opens the file. And then in the argument, you put the the path and name of the file itself and there's there's a number of escape characters it, it's actually a, a a bit wonky in terms of the the escape character quote sequence you have to follow and so i've included that in the presentation with some examples um, and i'll show you a, a way i've actually incorporated that in and of itself into a tool and then executables work the same way as files but just with with a blank argument and so at this point, what I want to do is really jump in the in the Power BI and um, and start showing you the the specifics of this. But um wanted to see before I do if there are any questions. I'm I'm because I've got full screen, I'm not seeing and I've got I've got something else on my second monitor. I'm not seeing the chat. So if there are questions um, in the chat. Yeah, you know, I'm happy to happy to take them and would like to make this a conversation. But since I'm not seeing those, maybe Tina, if you could kind of shout those out when they come up. So any any questions at this point? Okay. So hearing none, um, let me jump in. And um, the first thing I want to show you is this thing called PBI tool template. And if we fire this up, what this is is basically this is the 
the template itself for um, adding new things to the toolbar. And um, what we're going to do with this is actually is actually add a new one um, in a bit called Power Query How. And I don't know for those of you who are um, big big Power Query fans. Um, Rick DeGroote has put together an amazing resource called Power Query How that really is, it, it's, it's kind of becoming the equivalent of the definitive guide to M that, that the, um, you know, Marco and Alberto book is to DAX. And so I want to, I want to put that onto the toolbar. Um, but before I want to, I want to show, you know, kind of how you can you can add resources and one of them that i really love is the zebra bi chart selector and even if you're not a a zebra bi user um this is a free resource um it it comes as a downloadable uh, pbix file but what i do is i publish it out to the service and then include it on the um the external tools toolbar as a website and so if we click here what it'll do is it'll fire into into the report, and then what you can do is, if you're in a situation where you've got a particular technique or um, comparison that you want to visualize, you can kind of go, you know, down here in terms of you know contribution of variance. Um, there's there's one on correlation, analyzing correlation here. Um, and then, you know, through multiple charts, if we go to combo chart here, what it'll do is it'll it'll then pop this open and actually animate exactly how to build this this chart. And you know, you can go back and you can you can explore, you know, kind of other options for the same um, the same type of visualization. And it's just it's a resource I really I really like that I use all the time. I, I'm a big fan of the the Zebra BI visuals, but I said, even if you don't use those, um, more and more um, people are posting really great uh, templates for Deneb that are also doing the, the IBCS type visuals. And um, Miguel Myers and some of his presentations recently about the, um, the Microsoft effort to revamp the visuals has talked about how they're going to be incorporating that um, symbology and um, structure into the new visuals as well. So this is just one I want to highlight is a great resource that I, I use very much as an external tool. Um, okay, so let's let's talk for a bit about kind of how we how we manipulate the external toolbar and how we add stuff to it. So what we can do here is let's go. Let's go to Power Query How and take a look at that. Hmm, it looks like Rick's having some problem with the website, but let's just we can we can still add this. So let's take this. And now if we go back to to Power BI and we open up that template. Um, the other thing we can do is I've got on here base 64 encoder, and this is how we're gonna we're gonna add icons into our our toolbar. And there are a lot of base 64 encoders. This image.de one is one that I like a lot because what it's got is it's got an image optimization capability that will decrease the size of your um, of your your images, and particularly given the fact that Power Query has um, a limitation in terms of the size of images it can handle. Um, that that optimization is quite helpful at times. And so if we go and we pull the icon for Power Query How, I've downloaded that. Here we go. And we just drop that here. And we say copy image. Then what we can do so we can go down to that template and we can in for here and enter name.
And we can just put a brief one in here. Okay, and so if, since it's going to be a, a website, not an executable, we can just take this out and this. And then for arguments, we'll just paste the site right in here. And we'll paste the icon data right in here. Okay, and that should be that should be everything we need. And let's save that. And if you remember what we what we need to do is we need to save it to our external tools uh, directory. And it needs to be saved in a very specific format, which is um, the name Power Query How dot PBI tool dot JSON. And if we save that and now close this down, and the one thing you also have to do is for this to take effect, you need to close Power BI and then reopen it. And if everything's gone well, we should see Power Query How with its icon right on the toolbar. Oh, come on. Live demos. Let's just take a look. Oh, I think it's a space. Let's just pop this open, make sure we've got. Okay, that looks good. Ah. To replace that. Was perfect. 
Oh. All right. Just do one more thing. Okay. And now let's just copy that over. Okay, I've got that open somewhere. So let's not worry about that for now. We'll go back. Um, so the next thing I wanted to show was on the toolbar, one of the biggest time savers I've got. And let me just um, real quick, let me, uh, let me just break from sharing for a moment, just go back to see any questions. OK, um, go back in to share. OK, so let me show you um, the next one, which is the starter template. And one of the things I like best about um, this part of the external tools is every time I start a report, I can save myself 20 to 30 minutes in terms of not having to set my settings, pull in my um, pull in my um, custom visuals, um, change, you know, shut off things like the um, the auto date time, the auto um, the auto recognize relationships. So if I click starter template, what that's going to do, that's going to start Power BI with my template. Oh, there's the power query, how that's going to cause problems all night. OK. And what this will do is this now opens my template. It fires up the external, um, the enterprise DNA dates table that Melissa DeCorte has developed. Um, I have a, a country's dimension table that is full of you know, all the ISO two and three codes with WKTs so that I can just drop that into um, icon map. Um, I've got all my custom visuals um, fired up here. And basically I've got themes, I've got settings, and all that just is basically one click from the external toolbar. And so what I want to do is I want to show you from that one of the tools that um, Greg Deckler has developed, and he's developed a whole suite for us at Enterprise DNA that um, comes as part of subscription, but he also has these um, in slightly nerfed um, fashion um, on his um, on his own site, the Microsoft Hates Greg site. And so for each of these, the capabilities I'm going to show you, there's there's a free version that does very, very similar things. And so one of the things that um, that this does is if we fire a PowerSort Pro, what it'll do is it'll it'll basically go through our 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 dates table and then set columns by sort. And basically now everything in the dates table that can be set to a sort column is properly set. And so there's none of this, you know, column sort by sifting through for the, the different date columns. This is basically in three clicks, the entire dates table is set. And so we can show that if we just go up here to 
like month and year. And we pull that out into a table. You'll see that's that's properly sorted right from the jump. Um, if we go to month name. That's all properly sorted, so everything in the date table with three clicks is is all set and ready to go. The next thing that I use quite frequently is a tool that um, we make available for free um, that Melissa DeCorte, myself, and Stephen McGuire developed, and it's called Practice Dataset. And if you click on this, it just fires up PowerShell and then initiates um, a series of M queries. And what this does is this, this builds you out a, a, a three year data set, just kind of a typical, you know, sales customer product data set, star schema. And what it does is it builds it out so that the, the data is current to today's date. And so what I find this really, really helpful for is if you're submitting question to a user form, for example, and you've got um, proprietary data or data with, you know, PI or some other confidentiality um, concern. This gives you just a, a really good way with just a couple of clicks to, you know, have a non-confidential data source that you can often use to model the problem that you're having. Um, I use it a lot for, for teaching and instruction. Um, it's great for testing. Um, and so, you know, kind of, it's kind of just, you know, add water and you've kind of got this immediate, you know, star schema that you can use for, for all sorts of purposes. And what I want to show you in this is, as I said, I wasn't going to go through and do anything really extensive with Tabular Editor, but I did want to show you um, some stuff about managing measures. And so there's, for those of you who are not T, T users, um, there's some really incredible capabilities to develop um, scripting that will automate kind of common tasks here. And so if we look, um, default layout. And what I want to do is just kind of develop a whole series of base measures. So if we look here in our measures table, all we have currently is a total sales measure. So what I want to do is let's go to um, let's go to our sales table, and in here, what I want to do is for um, line total, order quantity, uh, total unit cost, and uh, let's say unit price. If we go through now and say macros and then create bulk macros, create bulk measures. Watch what happens. That what we now get is, is a series of five measures for every, for every um, column that we highlight. We get an average, a min, max, a medium, um, and a sum. What we can also do here is for each table, we can go through and say, let's click on all these. And we can do another automation, which is macros auto generate count rows. And if we click here in each of these tables, what we'll see is number of rows and customers, um, number of rows and channels. And so let's just click Control S, save that back to the model. And if we go back here to our data model, you can see here that what we've got is we've got all these measures created right in the, the model itself. So what we can do, I typically don't like my measures scattered all throughout the, um, the data model. I find it really confusing to find where things are. I know there are folks like um, Ruth and Matt Allington who argue against measure tables, but I think most folks, um, at least that I that I talk with, still use measure tables and folders. And so one of the things that I really like is 
in the external tools, there's another one that Greg has developed called Meta Mechanic Pro. And this is this is another really great time saver. Um, if we if we click here, what we can do is we can say get metadata. And it'll go through and for all the tables and columns in our report, what we can now do is we can say, OK, I want all my dates as short format. I want to turn off all my aggregations. I don't like those auto aggregations. We can, if we wanted to, we could go and we could set all our format strings. But let's say for now, what we want to do is just turn off our aggregations, set date to short date format, and move all of our measures into the measures table. And so we do that and then say set metadata, finished. And now watch. If I can click here fast enough, what you'll see is you'll see this change and update. Just got to keep track of which which report I was in. Ah, here we go. All right, let's just give that another quick go. Set metadata. Okay. Let me just make sure I'm running this off the right, the right table. There we go. And now all our measures are moved where they should be into the measures table and all our our dates if we if we go here to pull our dates out we should should see those as short dates. And we do. OK, so that that is. Um, creation of measures and management of measures. Um, the next thing I want to show and let me just pause and see if there are any any questions or comments at this point. Any okay, questions, not, don't be bashful. I mean, this has been pretty amazing, Brian. So there's always there's always that that kind of live uh, live tension of is is it all going to work? It always it works every time until you do it live in front of people. Always. But, um, 
OK, so let me let me jump in and show the next one, which is um, a phenomenal tool. And I, I'm trying to remember. I know he's really been on the the presentation circuit. Uh, Gregor Bruner, has he presented to your group yet? Uh, funny enough, I was uh, talking to, uh, to Gregor. Um, he's going to be in uh, like on the West Coast in October, first week to third week. And of course, our user group is on the fourth Wednesday. So we're like barely missing him. But I'm, uh, you know, I'm still keeping him on our backlog to hopefully get him on here. Yeah, he's he and his his team are doing just amazing stuff. And so I want to show you, I want to show you for those of you who are not yet using this, um, just a demo of Measure Killer and what you can do with with this one that I I just think is, again, just kind of an amazing capability, and uh, you know a huge time saver. Um, so let's go through. And here's, um, I've got a number of test reports. Yeah, let me, this is a challenge entry that Gustav Dudek and I put together for one of the recent enterprise DNA challenges. And I know I've got some unused measures and columns here. We can, we can kill those. So this was, this was a challenge that was dealing with, um, hospital drug treatment programs. Um, and so we looked at at a series of different types of intervention for different types of um, disorders and different types of substance abuse, and then looked statistically at which of those programs was was more or less effective. And so if we go here um, into our external tools and we fire up Measure Killer, what this does, this does the hard work for you in terms of as you're going through and particularly when we did like a collaborative development, um, you know, we were each kind of um, wrestling with some some different ideas about how to do the analysis. We were running some draft analyses and, you know, kind of seeing how that how that played out in the kind of the larger um, picture of what we were trying to do. So we we, we left a lot of we left a lot of stuff on the table in terms of um, analyses that we didn't end up using. And so what I've got here is I've got I've got a sizable number of measures and columns that we ended up we ended up not using. And um, let's just. Okay, this is it. this is the one, and so if we we click on that and we hit run, it's connecting and it's just going to take a little bit of time and buzz through that. And now what it'll do is it'll show us all of the the columns and measures that we're not using. And one of the things I like to do with this initially is plot results, and so. You can see here that we've got we've got a lot of a lot of unused columns um, and a fair number of of unused measures. And so what we can do is we can actually go through and we can we can kill all of those. So um, in this, what we want to do first is um, let's kill our measures first. And we we can we can select and go through and and typically we would be more careful in terms of making sure that um, these were these were truly not you know false positives. But in this case, you know, it's it's a demo report, and I'm just going to say kill all unused measures. And this is just going to tick through. And do you want to run measure killer again? Yeah. OK, and so now it looks like. We've killed all the unused measures and what we've got is just the unused columns. And so what we can do here now is say kill columns. And what this will do. We can say remove columns and then we can select a table and. I think like dates is one that has a lot of unused. Um, 
Yeah, the 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 dates table that Melissa has developed has I think fifty two fields initially, and you you basically have to sort through which ones you're you're going to use and not use. And so what I typically do is I don't worry about it, and I just run measure killer at the end. And so we we select, we apply these. And then we can. So what it'll do is it'll write the M code up here. And then we can just take this and we can copy that M code. If we go now into. In the Power BI and then transform. Um, our data. What we can do is is just. Basically copy that. Copy that script right into the into the advanced editor in the dates table and that will so if we replace that and then run it that will kill all of our un un unused columns and so you can you can go through basically and sequentially use measure killer in that way to really thin your thin your model out from the resources that aren't being used and so you can just see just in the space of you know a couple of minutes what we've got and if we run run measure killer again we can see okay now we rerun this what we'll get is we've got none of our none of our unused measures and then all of our our dates columns that are unused are now gone as well so this is a really great way to 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 thin your model down to increase performance, um, get rid of unused resources. Um, and the next thing I want to do is I want to show you um, Report Analyzer. And this is one, as I mentioned, this is Michael Kowalski from Microsoft. Who um, the other thing you might know him from is he maintains the best practices analyzer in the um, tabular editor and tabular editor three uh, module which is another great one that I've I've done a number of videos on. Um, we don't really have time to run through it tonight, but it's an incredible way to kind of ground truth your model to make sure that you're sticking with best practices for, um, for model design. And um, what he's got is he's got kind of a similar, a similar technique and, and logic that is applied to the visual layer of reports. So let's pop open a different report here. And this next report is one that um, Mike Ford and I put together um, comparing the, the calculate and, and no calculate DAX um, for um, Ruth's uh, initial 25 days of DAX um, challenge. And what we did is we 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 pump that up to 10 million records and then um and then ran that to see if there would be any difference between the performance of the calculate and the no calculate dax and there were the statistically there was no difference at all um but this also provides a a really interesting visual layer um given the the number of visuals in this report to do some testing with um with report analyzer and let's fire this up and just let this spin for just a minute. It's it, because it's 10 million records. It takes a little bit of time to crank through some of the the slower DAX measures. And as I mentioned, this is this is one of those that um, if you're restricted in terms of um, not having administrative privileges. This one runs beautifully as a standalone as well, but I, I run it um, as an external tool. And so the way this one runs, this one's a little bit different in that what you wanna do first is you wanna go um, view performance analyzer and we can start recording. Let's clear, refresh our visuals. Wait for the slow ones to spin out.
and you can see the no calculate DAX is finished early. The calculate is still is still spinning for days 12 and 13. Um, OK, so we've got we've got all that done. Now what we want to do is we want to export. The um, the performance data and let's just. Yeah, we'll put that right into this directory. And most of you are, are probably familiar with now if we were to open DAX Studio, we could import that performance data into um, in DAX Studio. But what we can also do is we can fire up um, Report Analyzer, and it will read that that performance data into the report. And so if we Okay, and what you see here is you see kind of a schematic of the the report visuals, and this is a good one just because I've got you know basically over fifty report visuals on this on this page in terms of individual cards. And what it does is it it shows based on this slider for the DAX query times, it, it it's smart enough to know that the um, the render time and the um, the third category, the other basically, is not really relevant to this. And what we, what we really want to be looking at is the, the DAX query time. And so what it does is it, it kind of has an initial threshold of um, anything greater than three seconds will highlight red. And what you can do is you can slide this around and say, OK, let's let's look at anything greater than 10. And there are there are three or four slowest visuals. And what we can do is we can, you know, we can kind of advance this and kind of see where the, you know, where the real bottlenecks are. Um, and we can see, you know, the those last two of the calculate. And then what we can also do, you can you can narrow this down by visual type, by visual ID. And the other thing that I really like about this is it's got um, it's got a report best practices, and this is my screen is a is a bit small in terms of the way it renders this, but let me uh, okay. And so what 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 it's got here, and I can what I can do is I can expand these and then we can screenshot them and blow them up because they're a little bit hard to read. And what this will do is this will show you this will show you kind of suggestions for ways in which you can speed the the visual layer. So in this case we've got we've got one visual that has a show items with no data and that's going to slow things down. We've got um in this case what it's telling us is we have 54 visuals on the page and that's going to be a problem for performance. We we know that that in some case in in some respects that's the um you know that's the nature of this report, but this will often go through and kind of flag for you bottlenecks that that are otherwise difficult to find. And so, you know, in terms of kind of pinpointing the really slow visuals on the page, the visuals by type and the best practices, this is a tool I really like and use use quite frequently to optimize reports. Um, let me show you. Um, I've got I've got a number more, but I wanted to show you a few quick ones um, and one that is that is really unusual in the sense that it does it does some things that other tools I've, I've not found any other tools that can do this and it does it in an interesting way so i want to show this one to you and this is um 
This is Ken Poles' Monkey Tools collection. And in order for this to work right, what we need to do is shut down all of our, our current reports. And the interesting thing about this one is it's a suite of tools, really powerful, flexible suite of tools, but that doesn't run from Power BI. That if you've if you've listened to Ken present, Ken really does his his data modeling and basically everything, everything up to to DAX and visualization in Excel. And um, so he's kind of built this tool as kind of an Excel centric, an Excel centric tool. And let me show you. Let me show you how this works because it's 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 a neat it's a neat kind of entree into Power BI and the data model. Um, and let's just fire up Excel quickly. And if we go here. Oh, and of course, Monkey Tools is acting up and is not showing up now. Um, all right. Hang on just one sec. It was working right before this. Okay, it looks like Monkey Tools is not behaving for us tonight. Um, the demo okay, so gods me, strike again. Demo gods, boy, they have just not been kind tonight. I know but, I mean, Ken uh, Pulse is a great book as well. You know, um, for those that haven't read Ken Pulse's book. Yeah, yeah, and the, the new the new edition in particular is exceptional. Um, a lot of new it material. It gets better and better every year. Yeah, a lot of new material in that. Um, okay, um, moving moving right along. Um, the next thing I want to show is a tool that um, that we are we we've been working on at Enterprise DNA for a lot of years, and um, we're we're kind of reimagining it now. And one, I just want to kind quick of quick question, Brian. I did yeah, see yeah. from George. When uh, I mean, I know it didn't work, but were you going to show the commercial paid version or the free version? earlier i think i we're was gonna actually going to show the commercial paid version oh, because gotcha. the, the one thing it has in there that i really really like is it has something called time sleuth and time sleuth is and i can show you I, I can show you the report that we produced from this and um time sleuth can do something that really nothing else i've seen is able to do um and what that what that does is with DAX, what I found is you can you can generally predict based on kind of a series of a series of general rules about performance in DAX of you know things like nested iterators and um, you know how divide performs in terms of performance and you know there there are kind of general rules for performance. What I found in Power Query is it is it is anybody's guess how anything is going to perform, and this was a good example of that that. Um, I did a um, I did a post one day about um, sampling your data using using Power Query using um, alternating bottom and top, and basically pulling x number of random samples from your data from the top of the data set from the bottom of the data set, and at regular intervals throughout the um, throughout the data and 
it wasn't surprising to me that top came out running quite fast. What was really interesting, though, was I expected either there to be no performance difference or alternating to be the slowest. What we found is by almost an order of magnitude or more than an order of magnitude in some cases, bottom is the slowest and alternating and top statistically are completely completely equivalent from a uh, from a, a timing standpoint and this is this is basically the data that came out of um, time sleuth and it's it's this sort of data in terms of being able to run it multiple iterations be able to run it with privacy both active and inactive um, and really kind of determine what what performs well and what doesn't empirically in Power Query, I have found to be just absolutely worth the the price of admission and more um, in terms of really improving the the performance of my reports. Um, it was interesting, um, Victor Wang, who is a really top-notch M programmer and is um, regularly on the um, both the enterprise DNA challenges and the um, the ones the BI the Excel BI ones that VJ Verma runs every night. Um, he actually had a, a theory that um, table to records was much more efficient than on pivoting, and so he was building a lot of his solutions with table to records. And we actually did a series of runs, and again found that that it wasn't slower, but it actually wasn't faster as we we hypothesized it was. So this is something I was hoping to show you, but um, you can see the the output of that um, from um, Time Sleuth. And I'll just go through just a couple more. Um, I know folks are probably between build and everything else um, pretty much done for the night, but um, let me just show you real quickly. Um, one of the things we've got is in Analyst Hub, and this is something we're we're going to be working on making public to the entire community. Right now, it's it's enterprise DNA subscribers, but again, with you know, kind of Sam's vision of opening more and more out to the community, what we've got is in this in the in this app is a a set of tools, and there's theme generators, and there's um, there's some planning tools and um, and stuff. But the the thing that's really of value, I think, in here is the community code libraries. And if we go to community, what you've got here is, so for example, in DAX, you've got 410 shared you know, DAX measures. And so if you wanted, for example, um, cumulative totals, you could just search and basically, you know, here you've got, you know, sortable column cumulative totals, cumulative patterns, cumulative sales, and then you can just pop this open, copy your code, and then copy that directly into your um, your code library. And so what we've got is we've got you know kind of extensive you know raw code here. So if if you go um, C sharp, if you're a um, a tabular editor fan, you know there's a whole series of um, tabular editor scripts to you know format numbers as decimals, set format strings for all measures. Um, export the results of the the best practice analyzer all sorts of things you can do and similarly we've got r we've got Py python we've got m we've got dax you know and the the idea is to expand this out further to the community and make this even a more comprehensive library so that for almost any type of you know of dax measure that you know that you want so if there's like pareto here's pareto sales you know, you've got that you've got that code available right to you and that's that's something we're going to be we're going to be expanding out to the community pretty soon um one more that i'll one more that i'll show is is dax editor pro and again this is this is part of the ones that um greg deckler has um designed and this this one i love because it's always been a mystery to me why microsoft has created this you know state-of-the-art program and saddled us with the worst code editing experience of any program I've ever seen. And <laughs> the the DAX editor. We should editor all come is, off mute and just like cheer for that. The the DAX editor is just an abomination, and you it know, it reminds me totally. it, it's 
it's like it, it's like building a formula one race car and putting like a ten dollar lawn chair in as the driver's seat <laughs> and you know what greg did is basically you know showed how how simple it would be to really build a, a lightweight um you know editor that could do really all the things you you would need it to do you know so here we've got we've got dark mode um we've got if we we select a measure oh let's let's go with something a little more oh i think these are just uh yeah these okay so right here um what we can do is we can um, we've got full search and replace capabilities in this. Um, we've got the ability to put descriptions here. We can move to folders. We can, if this were, um, you know, like an image URL, we could set that property. Um, we've got some debug capabilities. Um, there's there's an auto format in here. Um, and the other thing I really like about this is, and this is something that is just so simple, but such a time saver, is the ability to copy measures right within the editor. So I just hit copy there, and you see it went from age to age one. And so we can we can basically say, okay, this is, you know, we can call this, you know, birthday. And we can say, you know, year plus one. And we can save that back to our to our measures. And it's just it's such a an improved editing experience just in terms of um, being able to being able to to do you know search and replace, um, formatting, copying, um, and it would really be be quite simple, I think, for for Microsoft to add in. So I, this is one I I use as my my default editor um and then when i really have kind of hardcore debugging and, and dax needs that's when i jump over to, to tabular editor three so there there are a couple more but at this point what i want to do is just um you know stop there and hope that that gives you you know just kind of a general sense of the things you can do with the the external tools capability um you know one of the things that that is very clear to me is that you know Microsoft in a very smart way has incentivized um, developers. You know if you look at um, if you look at who the who's on the list for you know each of the tools that we you know that we talked about tonight. It, it's it's an all star list of MVPs, and you know they've really incentivized people. I think in a smart way to develop these tools and make them available to the public, and so. Um, you know the 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 raft of really high quality additions to Power BI is is enormous. You know, and there there's probably I could I could do a, another presentation like this, not repeat any of the tools I showed you tonight, and go through another you know sixty to ninety minutes of ones you probably haven't you know haven't seen frequently, and they'd be just as good as the ones that you know that I showed tonight. And so, apologize for a couple of the you know the. The Murphy's Law glitches, but um, you know, I hope um, I hope that was helpful and instructive, and you know, kind of um, kind of fires up um, you know some spark of imagination in terms of how you might use external tools in a way that's beyond what you've been doing to date. You know, if you've not been using them and taking advantage, I would really just encourage you to dive in and just give a few of them a try, and it, it's it's quite addictive because you find just the ability to save time to you know, really tailor things to exactly the way you want to work um, is is really pretty spectacular.